Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another swashbuckling episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's tale begins years ago in the nation of Sin Kong, a French protectorate in Southeast Asia. There lived the French aristocrat Armand Duquesne and his son Jacques. Armand had been installed as a government official, but he was bigoted towards the Sin Kong natives and abusive towards his Sin Kongese servant, Wynne. Jacques had been raised in Sin Kong, perhaps even born there, and was more compassionate towards the local population. When he turned 18, his father told him that he believed they were the descendants of the Crimson Cavalier, a masked French swordsman who fought alongside other European heroes, such as the original Union Jack, during the First World War. As a sign of this noble heritage, Armand presented his son with a gift, a sword that once belonged to the Crimson Cavalier himself. However, the younger Duquesne was troubled by the oppression felt by the native Sing Kongese over a hundred years of French occupation. That same night, Wynne brought the idealistic Frenchman to a covert meeting where he listened to a rebel speaker named Wang Chu. Inspired by the French soldiers who fought against German occupation of their own country and the colorful costume of the Crimson Cavalier, Jacques Duquesne adopted the masked identity of the Swordsman. A bloody land war began, and over the following year, the swordsman fought alongside Wang Chu and his rebel forces. In exchange for his help, Wang Chu agreed to reunite Duquesne with his father at the end of the conflict. Eventually, French forces retreated, and the People's Government of Sin Kong was established. However, Duquesne was horrified to learn that his father had been killed by his own servant Nguyen several months earlier. Wang Chu and his forces attempted to slay the swordsman as well, but Duquesne fought back and fled the country. Escaping to the United States, Duquesne survived by using his sword-wielding skills at various circuses and carnivals. Eventually, he became the star attraction for the Carson Carnival of Traveling Wonders. Then one day, a pair of runaway orphans came to join the circus, Clint and Barney Burton. The boys were impressed by the swordsman's daring and skill. And when a drunken man claiming to be their legal guardian came looking for the boys, Duquesne defended them, allowing them to stay with the carnival. Clint later proved his own skill and daring by becoming the swordsman's assistant. Duquesne mentored Barton, tutoring him in acrobatics and knife throwing. And Barton displayed an uncanny natural aptitude for marksmanship. Meanwhile, the swordsman's popularity began to wane when the crowds were more drawn to the master archer, Trickshot. Duquesne had also taken a liking to gambling during his time in America and came up with a plan to improve his act. After beating Trickshot in a game of cards, he had the Archer work off his debt by tutoring Burton as well. The two became a spectacular team as Clint Burton grew in skill. However, Duquesne began to grow jealous of his own protege and warned him not to attempt to surpass him. This shift in attitude was likely related to his gambling becoming problematic as his debts were piling up. He soon started getting notes warning that if he didn't pay what he owed, it would not end well. Desperate for cash, he turned to crime and soon robbed the carnival itself, but was quickly found by Burton with the stolen money. Duquesne offered to have Clint join him as a partner in crime, but Burton refused and dashed off. Duquesne gave chase, seeking to silence the boy permanently. Clint knew that in close quarters he would be at a disadvantage and attempted to create distance between them by climbing atop the high wire. However, the swordsman simply cut the wire, causing Burton to fall, breaking both of his legs. Having given himself over to jealousy, rage, and desperation, Jacques Duquesne prepared to strike down his own pupil. But before he could, he was chased off by Trickshot, and Clint was brought to the hospital by his brother, Barney. After that, Duquesne abandoned any semblance of honor and fled to Europe, becoming an international criminal and mercenary. Meanwhile, back in Sin Kong, the war he'd helped start had not ended. In fact, when the swordsman left, it was just the beginning, and soon tensions boiled over into an international conflict. And a Chinese crime lord, known only as the Mandarin, sought to manipulate the war for his own ends. 
He allied himself with Wang Chu, who had become a brutal warlord. The United States also became involved in the Sin Kong War, and many notable Americans served their country fighting in Southeast Asia, such as James Rhodes and Frank Castle. It was in the midst of this conflict that Wang Chu, under the purview of the Mandarin, abducted the American industrialist Tony Stark and the Chinese scientist Ho Yinsen. However, rather than build weapons as demanded, Stark and Yinsen constructed the first armored suit which transformed Tony Stark into the invincible Iron Man. Stark returned to America, becoming a founding member of the superhero group The Avengers and a hero of considerable repute in his own right. And as fate would have it, one of the opponents Iron Man would face early in his career was Clint Barton, under the masked identity of Hawkeye, a name based on something Duquesne had once called him. Then later, when several Avengers took leaves of absences, new members were accepted into their ranks, one of which was Hawkeye. Meanwhile, during the swordsman's career as an international criminal, he'd been deported from a dozen European nations and returned to America. He suspected that if he could trick his way into becoming an Avenger, he would be able to repair his reputation. He broke into their headquarters and encountered two of their members. While he was able to best the overconfident Quicksilver, he was defeated by the hex powers of the Scarlet Witch. Captain America soon arrived on the scene and was informed that the Swordsman wished to join their ranks. However, a quick background check revealed his crimes and Duquesne slipped away. Furthermore, Hawkeye later returned and revealed to Captain America his own past with Duquesne, although the Swordsman was likely unaware that Clint Burton was an Avenger himself. Days later, Duquesne lured Captain America into a trap, sending him a fake message from S.H.I.E.L.D. While the Avenger thought he was meeting with Colonel Nick Fury, he was instead attacked and captured by the Swordsman. Keeping his prisoner tied and bound, Duquesne held Cap hostage atop a construction site, declaring that he would end the hero's life unless the other Avengers pledged their loyalty to him. Not willing to be used as a bargaining chip, the captain took the initiative and leapt from the building himself. Acting quickly, Quicksilver used his super speed to whip up enough of an updraft to slow Cap's descent, allowing Hawkeye to loose an arrow which cut through his ropes, allowing him to land atop a platform freed by the Scarlet Witch. The swordsman attempted to battle the four Avengers, but he was outnumbered and outgunned. However, at the last moment, Duquesne disappeared into thin air. He had been teleported away by the technology of the Asian crime baron, the Mandarin, and brought to his castle in China. Duquesne was initially hostile towards his abductor, having heard legends of the Mandarin, perhaps while growing up in Sin Kong. However, he soon realized that fighting him in his own territory was futile, and that they had a common enemy in the Avengers. The Mandarin upgraded the swordsman's weaponry, endowing his sword with McLuhan technology that allowed it to discharge various beams, gases, and energies. As part of a plan to strike back against his own nemesis, Iron Man, the Mandarin wanted to trick the Avengers into accepting the swordsman into their ranks. To accomplish this, he sent a holographic transmission to the Avengers, making it seem as though it was coming from Iron Man, and that the founding Avenger had intended for the swordsman to join them. The Avengers were naturally suspicious, but cautiously accepted so they could keep a closer eye on the Swordsman and learn the truth. He trained with them for several weeks, always under close watch, during which time he began to suspect Hawkeye's true identity. He was also enamored by the beauty of the Scarlet Witch. But one day, while their guard was down, the Swordsman saw his opportunity to plant a miniature explosive device that the Mandarin had given him. One which the villain would detonate when Iron Man eventually returned, destroying his enemy once and for all. But when the Armored Avenger didn't come, the Mandarin decided to change his plan and blow up the other Avengers to lure Iron Man back so that he and the Swordsman could finish him. However, Duquesne had come to admire and respect the Avengers, and while defeating them in battle would be one thing, they deserved better than a cowardly assassination. He disarmed the device, but was caught by Hawkeye and Captain America, who assumed that he was planting the bomb rather than removing it. This of course led to a fight, but the Swordsman was able to escape. 
The Mandarin attempted to detonate the bomb remotely, but Duquesne had already gotten outside the building and threw it into the air. Regretting his actions, Duquesne hid among a traveling circus once again. However, he was later found and approached by a foreign agent known as the Black Widow. The Widow was originally a Russian spy who turned against her superiors after allying herself with Hawkeye. But at this time, she had been captured and brainwashed by Chinese agents and ordered to destroy the Avengers. To help accomplish this, she recruited the Swordsman and another masked criminal, Eric Jostin, the original Power Man. These villains were no match for the assembled Avengers, particularly after Goliath and the Wasp rejoined the team. However, they were soon tracked down by Hawkeye, who attempted to fight Power Man and the Swordsman alone. By separating his two opponents, Hawkeye was able to defeat his old mentor. He was nearly taken from behind by Power Man, but the Black Widow was able to break free from her brainwashing and rescue Hawkeye. The Swordsman and Power Man remained partners for a time after this. They were hired by the Red Skull to battle Captain America in Canada, and later joined the criminal Egghead as members of his Emissaries of Evil. That time, they were defeated by a Canadian super team led by Wolverine, The Flight. Despite how their previous dealings had ended, Duquesne accepted another job from the Mandarin in which he and Power Man would steal diamonds from Bolivia, which would power another of his machines. He later fought on behalf of another French mercenary, Batrock the Leaper, but was defeated again by Captain America. Sometime after that, the Swordsman again met with Egghead, who confirmed his suspicions that the Avenger Hawkeye was, in fact, Clint Burton. Egghead hired the Swordsman to abduct Goliath, thinking the identity was still being used by his old nemesis, Hank Pym. Duquesne accomplished his task, but at the time, Clint Burton was operating as Goliath, a fact that the Swordsman quickly deduced. Since this Goliath was not Pym, Egghead and Duquesne got into an argument over whether or not he'd brought the right man. This fight ended when Egghead fired a laser beam that knocked his opponent out the window. Having awakened, the Goliath Burton quickly assembled a giant-sized bow and fired a makeshift arrow, giving Duquesne something to grab and save himself. In the end, Burton apprehended both Egghead and the Swordsman, and Duquesne admitted that after so many years, Clint had finally proven himself superior. The Swordsman eventually returned again as a member of the Grim Reaper's Lethal Legion. He was again defeated by the Avengers, and this time imprisoned. However, he soon escaped again, returning to international crimes where he was unlikely to face Captain America or the Avengers again. But as many failures had cost him respect and opportunity, and he longed to serve a noble purpose once more. He soon found his chance when the call went out for all Avengers, past and present, to meet in England and combat a world-ending threat posed by Ares, the god of war, and the Asgardian Enchantress. Having intercepted the call, the swordsman arrived to offer his services in defense of the Earth. Naturally, the Avengers were hesitant, but the Swordsman proved himself in the ensuing battle. However, he disappeared after that, not trusting the Avengers to let him go free. He had grown disillusioned with his life of crime and was hunted by the authorities no matter where he turned. Because of his many defeats, he could no longer find employment under any respected criminal organization. He eventually retreated back to Southeast Asia and began working in the Vietnamese black market under a man known as Monsieur Cruel. Pained by his lack of friends and the dissolution of his reputation, he descended into depression and alcoholism. He did catch the attention of a Vietnamese barmaid named Mantis who felt sympathy for him, but he soon hit his lowest point when he failed in a mission to raid a rival gang's warehouse and was left for dead. He surely would have died if not for the empathic Mantis who carried him home and nursed him back to hell. When Duquesne recovered, he wished to reform and Mantis encouraged him. Together, they wished to rejoin the Avengers, but Captain America was highly against the idea. However, the other Avengers wanted to give the Swordsman one more chance, and Cap relented. During a probationary period, Duquesne was put under the watchful eye of the Thunder God, Thor, one of the most powerful Avengers and a founding member. Satisfied by the Swordsman's performance and daring, Thor offered his full support for Duquesne's membership. 
Mantis was no slouch either and aided the Avengers with her martial arts skills and empathic abilities. However, because of his crimes, the swordsman was still unwelcome in many countries. He was desperate to prove himself and thought that he found his chance when the villains, Loki and Dormammu, orchestrated a war between the Avengers and the Defenders. Duquesne battled the Asgardian defender Valkyrie in Bolivia where he had suffered one of his earlier defeats. But during the conflict, Duquesne was struck from behind by a third party and badly injured. He was taken away by the authorities who put him in jail for his past crimes and a doctor was called to tend to his wounds. However, Captain America arrived before the doctor assembling the Avengers to join the Defenders against a common threat. Duquesne concealed his injuries and continued to fight despite receiving enmity from Hawkeye. The consequences of these actions were later felt when Duquesne collapsed, his wounds having become infected. In a subsequent battle with the criminal cartel Zodiac, Mantis was also injured, although not as severely. Words from the Vision complimenting the Asian Avengers served to stoke Duquesne's resentment and jealousy, as he feared a romance was blossoming between the Synthesoid and his beloved Mantis. This was made worse when she later sensed that the Vision was in trouble with her empathic abilities and rushed to help him. Duquesne attempted to follow, but collapsed again, having not yet fully recovered. The Avengers soon defeated Zodiac and took one of their members, Libra, hostage when he claimed to be Mantis's father. From this, Duquesne and the Avengers learned more about Mantis's past and that her mother was a Vietnamese woman named Lua. However, her brother was Monsieur Cruel, who disapproved of Lua's marriage to the German Libra so greatly that he had his own sister killed and attempted to have her baby slain as well. Blinded by Cruel's men, Libra fled through the Vietnamese jungle with his infant daughter. He eventually found sanctuary at the temple of the priests of Pama, unaware that the priests were renegade pacifists from the alien race known as the Kree. The priests raised and trained Mantis, endowing her with her empathic abilities. Having been employed by Cruel in the past, Duquesne sought to prove himself once and for all and stole a Quinjet to return to Vietnam. The swordsman fought valiantly against Cruel's forces, but in his weakened state he was eventually overwhelmed and defeated. Duquesne was then tortured by Cruel until he revealed what he knew about Mantis and the priests of Pama. The Avengers soon arrived to rescue the Swordsman, but it was too late. Cruel and his forces had already gone to the temple in the jungle and slaughtered the priests of Pama. However, this served to free a monster from the planet Vormir that the priests had been keeping dormant, the deadly Star Stalker. By the time the Avengers had reached the temple, the Star Stalker had already killed Cruel. It was then up to Mantis and the assembled heroes, minus the disgraced swordsman, to defeat the Star Stalker once and for all. Meanwhile, Duquesne confessed to the Scarlet Witch that he was in love with Mantis. However, he was racked with self-doubt and insecurity from his various failures. His body eventually recovered from his injuries, but his heart still ached. During one mission, he accused the Vision of going after Mantis, much to the shock of both Mantis and the Vision's own beloved Scarlet Witch. Following this, the Swordsman persisted, confessing his love to Mantis. However, Mantis was preoccupied with the fact that the recent revelations about her past didn't line up with her own memories. And so Duquesne's insistence on pursuing a relationship with her only served to drive her away. The Swordsman was emotionally broken and had to be stopped from lashing out by Iron Man and Thor. Ironically, it was Duquesne's outburst that caused Mantis to seek comfort with the Vision. And the Vision, in turn, declared his own love for the Scarlet Witch, insisting that he cared about Mantis, but as a friend. It wasn't long after that when the Avengers were attacked by the time-traveling supervillain Kang the Conqueror. Kang was after the Celestial Madonna, a woman who was destined to birth a being powerful enough to rule the world. Unsure of the Madonna's identity, Kang captured three women, the Scarlet Witch, her teacher Agatha Harkness, and Mantis, along with other powerful Avengers who could stand against him. 
Fortunately, Agatha Harkness was able to reach out mentally and reveal their location to the swordsman. Needing allies, Duquesne joined forces with Hawkeye, as well as a variant Kang from a divergent timeline, Rama Tut. The unlikely assembly infiltrated Kang's headquarters, rescued the Avengers, and helped battle the mad villain. However, Kang determined that Mantis was, in fact, the Celestial Madonna, and decided that if he could not have her, then nobody would. The next few moments happened quickly as the swordsman leapt in front of his love. Ramatut dove at his evil counterpart, attempting to stop him, but it was a moment too late. The lethal energy beam hit the swordsman's blade, sending a surge of deadly power through his body. While the two Kangs disappeared into the time stream, the swordsman hit the ground. Throughout his life, Jacques Duquesne had been a revolutionary, a mercenary, a hero, and a villain. But in his death, he was an Avenger. Duquesne's body was brought back to Southeast Asia, where it was buried in the Temple Garden where Mantis was raised. However, what Mantis didn't know was that the trees in the garden were actually Kotati, sentient plants from the Kree homeworld. The eldest tree, the Kotati Supreme Exemplar, transferred his consciousness into the swordsman's lifeless body to be reborn in human form. After psychically connecting with the Kotati, Mantis agreed to marry him and fulfill her destiny as the Celestial Madonna. Before the ceremony, Kang made one more attempt at capturing Mantis, but this time he was thwarted by Immortus, an older and wiser Kang variant who swapped her out for one of his shape-shifting space phantoms. And so, in the garden of the Priests of Pama, Immortus officiated a dual wedding in which the Vision married the Scarlet Witch and Mantis married the Kotati Swordsman. Mantis and the Kotati then took the form of psionic energy and left the Earth to conceive the Celestial Messiah. This child later emerged in the form of the Kotati Sequoia, a hybrid being that was both plant and animal. Duquesne was subsequently revived as many as three times in various incarnations of the Legion of the Unliving. He also returned during the Chaos War, when the Chaos King destroyed various realms of death, allowing the dead to walk the Earth. The Swordsman fought alongside several other dead Avengers and afterwards returned to the afterlife. The legacy of the Swordsman has also been felt throughout the years as others have used the identity. The first was Philip Jarver. Jarver was in fact an alternate version of the Swordsman from a universe where the Earth was destroyed. He was a member of a group of villains called the Gatherers, led by a man named Proctor, himself an evil version of Dane Whitman, the Black Knight. However, Jarver eventually defected to the Avengers before leaving that reality in search of a new home. Another otherworldly swordsman was created when Franklin Richards, the mutant son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, created a counter-Earth in a pocket dimension where many of Earth's heroes were reborn following the Onslaught incident. He later became the Deadpool of his world, but eventually died during a conflict between various interdimensional Deadpools. Next was Andreas von Strucker, the son of the notorious Nazi and Hydra leader Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. He was manipulated into becoming the Swordsman and joining the Thunderbolts by Baron Zemo and Zebediah Kilgrave, the Purple Man. Others have attempted to claim the mantle for themselves. One man who was trained by the original Swordsman and joined the Circus of Crime. He was defeated by Clint Burton and Clint's own protege, Kate Bishop. Another man, ostensibly a different individual, adopted the costume but was defeated by Captain America. And a particularly noteworthy individual is a young girl named Marjorie, although she's also been called Adeline. She appears to be the love child of the original swordsman and an unnamed French woman, the result of a pregnancy that Duquesne likely did not know about. Growing into a dashing young woman herself, Adeline took the identity of the swordswoman and became a costume adventurer fighting alongside other European heroes. Hopefully, we'll continue to see her forge her own path as she honors the legacy of Jacques Duquesne, the original swordsman.
But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!